Do you ever have the feeling you're forgetting something? <laughs> oh well. Hello friends, welcome back to the show. So glad to see you once again. And if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. This is the show where we talk about each and every episode of the new Batman Adventures, episode by episode, reviewing them, breaking them down, and looking at them from an adult's perspective, having been a kid once in the 90s growing up on shows like this. So if this sounds like something you might be into, then please hit the subscribe button down below. And, and while you're down there, go ahead and hit the like button and maybe the bell notification so you don't miss anything as it comes out because we're reviewing each and every episode every Tuesday and Thursday. And today we're talking about Cold Comfort, which originally aired on October 12th, 1997. Okay, everybody. Freeze. Hey, I wanted to say it. Well, this episode brings the return of Mr. Freeze. We technically last saw him in the movie Sub-Zero. We talked about it from his introductory episode, Heart of Ice, in the original Batman the Animated Series. But he is a phenomenal villain, and what they did with the animated series is incredible. And this episode is really the next step in his evolution, and it just keeps getting better and better. But we'll talk all about that right after our 60-second Joker Bomb rundown in the episode here we go. Freeze is back in Gotham and he's destroying people's life work from paintings to dinosaur bones and Batman and Batgirl are researching this and it just doesn't seem to make sense. Nora has now been revived but she went off and married the doctor because Freeze had disappeared and never came back for her and so now he's doing all these things that just don't make any sense. We go to Freeze's hideout and we find that he's holding a couple of doctors hostage to research his condition and try to figure out what, what is going on and so he now is targeting Bruce Wayne to destroy Bruce Wayne's uh, life and family. So he breaks into the Wayne Manor and he freezes Alfred and he threatens his family. And Bruce Wayne is just trying to help him. And he says, I can help. Let me help. And he goes, I'm beyond hope. And he, and he escapes. But then Batman and Batgirl follow the tracker that's that they put on his van as he's leaving. And when they get to his hideout, they find that Freeze is now a disembodied head that with these robot spider legs. And he has now plans to freeze the entire city and destroy everybody. And so they try to stop him and Batman throws him out of the plane and that's the end of Mr. Freeze or is it? Only I should have froze the bomb. Yes, it's a pity. Like I had said, I love Mr. Freeze and well, I don't love him. He's a villain and does a lot of bad things, but I really enjoy his character and a lot of the motivation that they gave him, that they created for him in the original Batman series is what makes him such a strong villain. You know, and the backstory with Nora and just trying to find a cure for her is really very interesting. And, and again, like we had talked about before, is that now with the new adventures, everything is kind of moved on a little bit. And that is proven with Mr. Freeze, that we establish that he has become a new, really, for all intents and purposes, a new type of villain. He's gotten older. He has different motives. He's got different things that are important to him. He has lost hope. Um, one of his big driving forces before was Nora, and now she's taken out of the picture. I did not come here to steal bones, Dr. Madsen. I came to steal hope. And physically, he has really evolved. That now his, his condition has deteriorated his entire body, and he has doctors trying to work on a cure for that. But in the meantime, he's just a head on spider legs, which is just a really creepy image. The accident that created me finally took its toll. By the time these doctors stopped my deterioration, all that was left undamaged. And I fully understand that this is one of those situations where this may not, not be everybody's preference. I'm the type of person that I can equally enjoy the Mr. Freeze that we saw in the original series and like where he's gone in this series. And I think what I appreciate most is that it's a deliberate effort to show the passage of time and, and, and really opens up this opportunity to do something different with the character or with any of the characters for that matter. Certainly there's some characters that stay pretty much the same, but, but characters like this, it, it's neat seeing where where they evolve to. But I also see it from the other perspective that you want to see more of the same Mr. Freeze. 
and you want to see that tragic story and him motivated by trying to save Nora. And now that that element's kind of gone, now he's just back to being an average criminal with a very unique design. But normal is hardly a word I would use to describe myself. But that was truly sort of my issue with Sub-Zero. If you didn't get a chance to see our review for Sub-Zero, you have to check that out in the link below. But that was truly one of our issues with that, is they took what was a great story for Heart of Ice, and they didn't really move it forward very far. They just kind of stayed in that same environment. And so I get it. Not a lot of people like change, and they want to just see the same thing and, and remain consistent in that way. But I do, my personal opinion is I like how they evolve the character and it makes sense and it's justified by the story that he's been dealing with up till now. But I also totally respect if you don't like change. What's up, Basil? It doesn't make sense. Nothing about Freeze's behavior makes sense anymore. The other thing that I really appreciate about this episode, which is, again, different now in the new adventures of Batman, is you really get to peer into the home life of the Waynes. And you get to see what the the family dynamic that is being created and established with now Tim Drake and Barbara Gordon, how we get to see, you know, the dual sides of Bruce Wayne, where he is working with Barbara Gordon, helping train her, and which is a great sequence, that whole training sequence where she's fighting the, the drones and, and the lasers and things like that is a great sequence. Not bad for a corpse. But I lasted longer this time. Dead is dead. I always enjoyed, uh, even as a kid, watching shows like this. And what, I love the training montages of all of these action movies when they're getting ready to go into battle. So it was really neat. That's a neat scene in that. But then you also get to see the other dynamic of Bruce Wayne as kind of the father figure to Tim Drake and talking about his homework and talking about uh, his school and things like that. Alfred tells me you failed a civics test. Like I really care what a district attorney does. And it just creates this really nice, homey kind of environment in Wayne Manor for Freeze to come in and disrupt that. And you get to see that dynamic of Bruce Wayne as a family man and as protecting his greatest life's work, which is his pseudo children, his uh, Batman family. And not just that, but also Alfred being a part of that, that that Mr. Freeze ultimately chooses to freeze Alfred because as the the pseudo grandfather father figure to Bruce Wayne. But you keep trying to create a surrogate family for yourself. To destroy you, I need only destroy that. Perhaps your beloved surrogate son. <gasps> no, I think the surrogate father. That little sequence there in Wayne Manor is a great addition to this new series, which, again, I don't know if that was something that I noticed or appreciated uh, with the episodes that I had seen of this when I was younger. But now, as an adult growing up, I, I appreciate that kind of uh, more full story. In the original series, yeah, it was very mystery driven and film noir but we didn't really get to see as much of the home life. Yeah, we got to see some interaction with Bruce Wayne and Alfred and got to establish some of that, but even the elements of Dick Grayson and Bruce Wayne, we really didn't get to see a lot of that. I like that that is incorporated into this episode. You don't exactly follow the rules of due process. I, how did you do on your math test? So then going into the final battle, it is, that whole scene is really well done. And it's neat watching Batman now after uh, last reviewing the Superman, the animated series, because I can see elements that they're borrowing from that show now. And the action I feel in the new Adventures of Batman has really been ramped up, um, which again was a big focus of the Superman, the animated series, was the action sequences and it's very bold and bright and powerful and so I'm seeing some of those elements incorporated into this final battle 
but then you get the best of both worlds because you also the the front half of the episode is really a mystery driven why is mr freeze acting this way what is he doing what is he trying to get get to but then also get some of the action sequences go ahead i can handle this but then the other thing that I think that they borrowed from Superman is this great tease at the end. We mentioned that in the Superman reviews that that, that show is really good at these little teases to, to propel you to the next episode. And this episode does that. Batman and, and Mr. Freeze duel and, and we think he's gone and he's been stopped and there's no way he could have survived that fall. And then we see just his body frozen in the ice and... At first glance, you go, oh, yeah, there he is. He's, he's been stopped. But then you remember, he's just ahead. So when it comes time to rank this episode, it is a really solid episode. And I feel like this is really blending all the great components of not just the past Batman the Animated Series, but also bringing in elements of Superman the Animated Series. And I know we're still early in the ranking, but I did choose to put this one at the number one spot of my favorite episodes so far. This one beats out Holiday Nights because it is a much more fleshed out, fluid story, cohesive, complete story. Whereas Holiday Nights is fun and enjoyable and it is a great kickoff to the new series, it is much smaller, simpler stories in these little mini episodes that's included in there. But this one is a really full encompassing and Mr. Freeze uh, with spider legs is just gives it a few extra bonus points. Everything all right up there? Roger, bad girl. I think we've seen the last of Mr. Freeze. So one of the things in this episode is they talk about how Mr. Freeze is doing these things and we don't know why and why he what made the shift in his psyche to be doing kind of these random violent acts. But what do you think sent Mr. Freeze off the deep end? Was it Nora running away with the doctor? Was it the loss of his own body? Was it a combination of the two? Was it just getting beat down by, by Batman every time that he tries to perform a caper? What do you think the defining moment of when Mr. Freeze kind of lost it and went off the deep end was? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. If you want to see more episodes like this, all you have to do is hit subscribe and the little bell notification, and you'll be notified every time a new episode comes out, which we're coming out with new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. And I'll be back next Tuesday with the episode Never Fear, The Return of the Scarecrow. So you don't want to miss that. As always, I'm Andy Cano. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.